Kitco News special coverage of Paris Blockchain Week Summit is brought to you by Okra, Permissioned DeFi Composable Index and Strategy Execution Platform. We're now talking with Silvio Micali. He is the founder of Algorand, a protocol with more than $4.8 billion in market cap. Welcome to the show. Pleasure to meet you, Silvio. David, thank you to meet you. <laughs> Great to meet you too. Pleasure to meet you in and Paris. And your audience. Yes, and our audience, very much a fan of your protocol, Algorand. I want to talk about the history of Algorand, first and foremost. You have founded this um, a few years ago in order to create an, a, a protocol that fixes many of the problems that you think Bitcoin had. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, when I came to the scene, there was the famous you know, trilemma, right, which uh, stated uh, incorrectly, fortunately, that no blockchain could be simultaneously secure, decentralized and scalable. Yes. So who wants an insecure blockchain? Nobody. Who wants a blockchain that is not scalable? Nobody. And, uh, and if you are not interested in decentralization, why to have a blockchain altogether? So I felt that you know, impossibilities always attract me as a scientist. Um, and so I decided to throw my hat and see if I could uh, uh, prove this impossibility wrong. Because sometimes it's my experience that we think big things are impossible, but they are not. Yes. This was one of the cases, but we needed to have a different approach to consensus uh, to overcome this uh, problem. And before we talk more about algorithm, you're a computer scientist by trade, professor yes. at MIT, correct? For 40 years, For 40 I'm, years. Going on, I'm proud of it. Can you yeah. Tell us about some of the work you've done before cryptocurrencies and why you transitioned into the blockchain space. So I'm, I've been a cryptographer for many years. I've been um, 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 founding the public key uh, cryptograph cryptographic infrastructure as we know it. We came up with the first you know, examples and proofs for secure encryption, digital signatures for uh, zero knowledge proofs. I'm the co-inventor of them too and uh, multi-party computation. Uh, and so on and so forth. And what really attracted me in the blockchain is because it's an intersection of three fields. Yeah. One is cryptography, one is distributed computation. By the way, my first PhD, which I granted in 1985, to date myself a bit, was on the subject of fast Byzantine agreement. Yes. And that algorithm, improved by me cryptographically later, has become the workhorse workhorse for uh, Algorand consensus mechanism. And so the third field is really economic incentives, and, uh, and which is something that I've been working on um, uh, for the past few years. So I felt that the blockchain at the intersection of these three things was ideal for my expertise, and I really want to throw all of myself into this venture and uh, found that Algorand, found a new way of doing things, and I'm having fun ever since. Okay. Would it be fair to call you the father of cryptography in the blockchain space? Well, blockchain has many fathers. Um, Bitcoin hat off to, uh, yes. to the vision. As very often is the case, uh, somebody hat off to the vision, but the first solution no, is not necessarily the best. The same thing could be said about Google, that it was not the first, you know, yes. um, somehow protocol, but it was maybe the best. So, I mean, I've uh, always... Uh, you know, the vision of Nakamoto or the Nakamoros, right. uh, but I'm saying uh, I believe that our approach to blockchain is indeed totally new, foundational, and in fact, actually refoundational of the field. The blockchain trilemma describes an ideal situation where you have a coin that is scalable, decentralized, and also secure. Now, explain why Bitcoin does not satisfy all three. Well, in fact, it's a ch challenge a lot. First of all, uh, let's speak about security. So, uh, can you participate in uh, in, uh, in blockchain um, uh, protocol? Do you want to mine? Sure. Buy a bunch of supercomputers sure. and welcome to mining. Sure. Okay. Can you afford the supercomputers? I hope that you do individually, but not everybody can afford it. So, it was meant to solve who chooses the next block, and we said, okay, it looked good at the time, the idea. I don't, I'm not in charge of producing blocks, you are not in charge either. We are going to have a computational game. Whoever wins the game before the others to solve a very hard cryptographic riddle presents the solution for the riddle and has the right to, um, to append the, the next block to the chain on behalf of all of us. But the idea is that one day, one time you win, another time I win, and so on and so forth. It 
turns out of it, the winning requires so much cost right now. There has been an arm race, it's so costly. And when costs go up, fewer and fewer people can afford it. And therefore, becomes de facto centralized, even though wanted to be decentralized. Another problem is that you know, the consensus is not immediate. It is a drip, 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 drip process. So when you add a new block, you are saying, I believe the best block and is the one before are valid. Right. Somebody adds your block, is voting for this twice. But you know, you need to require many, many uh, votes to have a chance to be permanent of the chain. And you know that the chain forks. Forking is not a good idea for a blockchain. Right. Blockchain, in my opinion, you don't should... support forks. I, I don't want forks on a blockchain. Forks are bad because think about an NFT. What is an NFT? Is a, a representation or a unique good? Well, there cannot be two Mona Lisa. If there is a fork and you own the Mona Lisa over here and right. I own it over there, right. in what sense is this a representation of a unique good? Yeah. So forks are really problematic. So I felt that this was another problem that we solved. And another problem was the extreme uh, uh, wastefulness of uh, uh, computational resources of energy that uh, Bitcoin and proof of work have. And so in Algorand, uh, there is always uh, a unique, uh, a single branch. There is a unique blockchain, no ambiguity. Every block is final because it's been agreed uh, by the community. And uh, uh, we use as much energy collectively as the equivalent of 10 homes. So that is really, uh, we don't waste, um, uh, yeah. waste um, um, uh, energy when we shouldn't. And so somehow uh, we are really decentralized because of the bar to participate to our consensus is your laptop is plenty. Okay. Now you, uh, Algram uses something called pure proof of stake. Yes. How does that make computations more efficient, faster and cheaper? Okay. Pure proof of stake essentially works as follows. So uh, rather than having a computational game, so we somehow, we, we have each one of us conducts in the privacy of our own laptop a cryptographic lottery. That is a cryptograph cryptographically fair lottery. Even if I'm a national state, I cannot improve the chance, even minimally, of winning the lottery. For each token you have, you have the equivalent of uh, a slot machine lever. You can pull it down, and when you pull it down, two cases happens. Either you lose, you can say whatever you want about the next block, you are going to be ignored. But if you pull it down and you have a, a winning ticket, you propagate the winning ticket, which is a mathematical proof that you are part right. of 1,000 tokens committee that manages the new block and is in charge of a new block, and, uh, and then you are in and uh, your opinion is learned. So why this scales? Because pulling the lever is a microsecond for one token, two tokens, or how many tokens you have. So that scales. Propagating a winning ticket, which is a very short, and your opinion about the block, for a thousand people at most, that scales too. And finally, why is this secure? Because if I'm a bad guy who can corrupt instantaneously a thousand people all over the world yes. at my will, I don't know if I should corrupt you, this lady in Paris, this other uh, guy in, in Shanghai. Why? Because I don't know who is going to be the winner of his own or her own lottery. And one, by the time in which I see the winning ticket, I know I should corrupt, but guess what? It's a bit too late to corrupt them because the winning ticket and opinion about the block are virally propagating over the network and I cannot put them back in the bottle even if I wanted to. Ethereum is slated to move to proof of stake this year as well. Is that a move you agree with? I think proof of stake, first of all, we should say, is a portfolio of uh, solutions. And there are many proof of stakes. One is a delegated proof of stake which I don't love because essentially what does it mean delegated proof of stake? But you put in charge 10 people, 20, and, uh, and you say you, on behalf of all of us, are in charge of growing the chain. I find that this actually is not central, decentralized at all. Right. And, and because um, uh, if, if you ask me. So uh, there are bonded proof of stake that have all kinds of, of, of other problems about them. So. But one thing is that, uh, but there is one variant, which is one sponsored by Algorand, pure proof of stake that I stand by. And I think that it's green, it's fast, it's secure, and has all the attributes and allows anybody to participate. So if you're willing to participate, not only you are welcome to participate, 
But that is not enough. You have the computational means to participate because your laptop should be enough to participate in consensus. And that's what the pure proof of stake guarantees. As to Ethereum, I don't mean in an adversarial way, but this year is the year where uh, they want to, uh, to adopt some version of proof of stake. But so it was the last year, and so was the year before that, and I stopped. <laughs> but, so we hope that they have a successful transition, and, uh, but I don't know what proof of stake they are going to adopt. Remember, it's a portfolio. And so right now, they are sacrificing scalability for, uh, uh, in favor of security. But are they going to sacrifice security to gain scalability? I do not know. So I cannot comment until they do transition and we see what they transition to. Okay, so NFTs, the metaverse, and Web 3.0, these are all buzzwords in the crypto world right now. But what we are seeing is more adoption of cryptocurrencies for these utilities. So we have more utilities for cryptos. How can we create or develop cryptos going forward such that it scales and becomes more readily adopted on a mass level in an efficient manner? Correct. I think of it right now, people have to really realize of the 6,000 and change blockchain which, uh, that exists, which ones are really truly scalable, decentralized and secure. Yeah. And if you, if you do that, then you find a suddenly convergence because right now there is confusion in the market, particularly because of uh, blockchains that are, for instance, um, speculative in nature. They don't really care if they are yeah. centralized or decentralized, right? right. If, you are a, a, if you like to bet, do you care if it's a two, three people organizing the chain or you really want to be part of it? So right. I think, uh, but if, if you have a, a, a major institutions or even national deployments, then uh, decentralization right. is really vital because nobody's going to handcuff him or herself to a blockchain that is controlled by few entities. F final question. Uh, what is your legacy that you want to leave in the blockchain and computer science world? Are you trying to achieve the blockchain trilemma? I think we have achieved that. But I really, um, from the very launch, we, we are a really um, solved the trilemma that was a, has been our claim to fame. And now we are adding, you know, um, 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 best of uh, breed, you know, smart contracts and things. But if you want to ask me what I'm passionate about, I want to democratize finance. That to me, DeFi means democratization of finance. I want to give it to the people on the street, to each one of them, the same sophisticated tool at a fraction of a cost today, but right now are available only to a very few elite. Dr. McCalley, pleasure. David, thank you very much. It's been Honor a pleasure to have you on the show. Too. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lin. Kitco News special coverage of Paris Blockchain Week Summit is brought to you by Okra, permissioned DeFi composable index and strategy execution platform.